The foot and ankle joint has lots of bones and ligaments and therefore lots of things that can go wrong. How do we differentiate as physiotherapists and physical therapists what's going on? Well, in this video, I'm going to go through the special tests that you can use in order to differentiate between different pathologies of the foot and ankle joint to help you out with your assessment and your treatment. For an anterior draw test of the ankle for um, anterior talofibular ligament injuries, you'd bring the, the foot up into or knee up into 30 degrees of um, flexion. You'd hold um, the calcaneus and you stabilize through the tibia with about 10 to 15 degrees of plantar flexion of the ankle. And then I'm going to draw, stabilize and hold the tibia while I draw the calcaneus anteriorly. You could also do this with the foot stabilized and actually then more of a push on the tibia posteriorly. Laxity compared to the other side and or pain would be an indicator of a positive test. So for the Taylor tilt test, again, you can do this test in sitting for the purposes of the video. I'm just going to do it in this position. But basically what you would be looking for is the anterior Taylor fibular ligament, the calcaneo fibular ligament, and also the posterior Taylor fibular ligament. So what you would do is you're going to be taking the foot into inversion and eversion in varying degrees of, of plantar flexion. So with slight plantar flexion, inversion and eversion, just stabilizing the tibia. So you're grabbing the calcaneus with this hand, which is coming into eversion and inversion, and you're looking for pain um, in the area of the ATFL. Then if we come into a neutral position of the uh, ankle, so neutrally dorsiflexed ankle, and we do the same thing of inversion and eversion. We're looking for deltoid ligament injuries medially and CFL, the calcaneofibular ligament on the lateral side. And then if we come into maximal dorsiflexion and again do the same thing, so in, invert and evert, then we're looking more at the posterior talofibular ligament complex. A syndesmosis squeeze test is for looking for syndesmosis injuries at the ankle. For this, what we would do is compress between the tibia and the fibula. So one hand either side and compress through. The more distally, um, or proximally rather, at the tibia and fibula, the pain into this ankle area, the more extensive the injury. For syndesmosis injuries, we also have a dorsiflexion external rotation test. So if we bring the ankle into dorsiflexion, and external rotation. What we're looking for is pain in and around that syndesmosum region. That would be a positive for this test. So Thompson's test is a nice easy test to see whether there's Achilles ruptures of the Achilles. Simply for this test we would squeeze the calf and we would expect to see a plantar flexion at the foot as you do that squeeze. A positive test would be no plantar flexion when you squeeze the calf muscle. For injuries at the navicular, we can palpate through the navicular bone itself, medially here in the, in the foot. And if you had navicular, if you're thinking of a navicular AVN or some sort of stress fracture, then again, you'd expect point tenderness when you palpated through that navicular bone. If you're trying to differentiate between gastroc and soleus tightness, the silver ski old test is one that you can use. So for this one, we're going to maximally dorsiflex the ankle with a straight knee, and then we're gonna maintain that and come into a bent knee position and see whether the dorsiflexion increases as you do that. If you get increased dorsiflexion as you bend the knee. You're looking at a gastrocnemius um, contracture or tightness because gastrocnemius goes over the knee and therefore it is stretched in a straight knee position. So if you've got more movement of the ankle when your knee is bent, it suggests that your gastroc is tight. So for tarsal tunnel injuries, if we bring the ankle up, if you've um, Tarsal tunnel or nerve compression injuries around the tarsal tunnel is this medial aspect here of the foot. So what you can do is a Tennell's test where you tap through that medial aspect. And if you had a pathology in that region, you'd expect a reproduction of the neurological symptoms in that area of the foot. So you want to tap for a good 30 seconds to see whether there's any reproduction of pain and or paresthesia or numbness in that region. For the stress fractures of the foot, you can do hop tests, so hopping up and down on one leg, 
and then see whether there's pain doing that. And again, we're looking really for palpation. So we've talked about navicular palpation. We've also got the fifth metatarsal head palpation. So if we palpate the bony prominence on the lateral aspect of the foot, there should be point tenderness there if you've got any stress fractures to this area. And we've also just got bony palpation of the, the tibia and bony palpation of the malleolus, lateral malleolus, and then laterally up the fibula, or medial malleolus, palpation, and then palpation up the tibia. So more than four centimeters of um, pain when you're doing that and real point tenderness on the area of the bone itself, especially if that's the area where they get their pain, they should, you should be suspicious of potentially a stress fracture. If this video was helpful, then the one on the screen now will be super helpful on knee conditions and how you differentiate between different knee conditions with special tests. If you enjoy this sort of stuff, then subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you don't miss any uh, of our future videos, and I will see you guys on the next one.